Here you are. Oh, here you come. leadership to give us all an opportunity to hear what uh, is going on in the world of politics and to compare notes and, and exchange ideas. And the original plan, as you probably know, was the president had agreed to come by and appear briefly and extend his respects. And then he said, Howard, why can't I stay for lunch? <laughs> and I said, Mr. President, believe me, you can stay for lunch. <laughs> So we are delighted that you would do that, and while luncheon is on its way, why don't I make a couple of uh, introductions, and I'm going to turn the meeting over to Frank Farenthal. Uh, I'm pleased to be here, ladies and gentlemen. I believe, and believe me, I'm going to carry Ronald Reagan's flag here and do the very best I can 100% of the time to see that Ronald Reagan's programs are
notice all the people look up when he's in the tree. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, why did I stand up? Hey, what do you about you? Bill Armstrong had a little quiver there. Mr. President, sir, there's a story that Poindexter's going to say he told you all about that money. Is that true? So there's a story that Poindexter. Sorry. I lost my voice, Sam. <laughs> I wish Sam was losing it. Hold on there. <laughs> Sir, there's a story that Admiral Poindexter is going to testify that he told you about the diversion of money to the Congress. You're not telling me anything new. I just can't talk. Do you think that Poindexter and North should be Court Marshal, that's your daughter. I was thinking execution. Sir, were you peed about everything that happened? Were you peed about it? No, but I was. You got here just in time, so you had to break this out. Yeah, that's right. All right, Sir, do you think the resignation of Arturo Cruz is going to hurt the effort to aid the conference? He said he's not going to talk. <laughs> If he knew he was hurried, he wouldn't be late with it. Agenda. As you know, last week I sent out with Congress two communications that directly relates to our interest in Central America. First, I asked for $300 million in economic assistance for Central American democracy. And it was our intention that these monies go forward last year. I understand that the actual appropriation collapsed at the end of the fiscal year before the continuing resolution reached my desk. So to keep our commitment, we resubmitted the, the request. And also last week, we took the... Alan, how you doing? Hi, man. Alan, how nice to see you.
State visiting, you know, and three or four waves come through like this. And they start shouting questions at you right past the head of state, don't have a damn thing to do with what he's doing here, and all of this. And they're just out of line, so I decided convenient laryngitis to feel me. I opened my mouth to tell them that I'm not going to take any questions. They think that's an answer, and they ask another question. <laughs> well, listen, thank you all for coming down this morning. I wanted to be briefed on two important issues. First, the recent developments in Geneva, and second, the situation in Central America, and what I believe to be our best course of action. On the Geneva developments, let me say that I was encouraged last month when General Secretary Gorbachev agreed to pursue an INF treaty separately from the other discussions. It's the first time that we've been able to forget that and it's voluntarily from it. The timing of the, that opening was fortuitous, since we were then able to complete our internal work on a draft treaty that we've been working on based on the agreement in principle that I reached with him in Reykjavik, and that I could instruct our negotiator to present that treaty draft to Geneva. I believe our draft treaty contains the elements that the U.S. had long maintained were necessary for an agreement, stabilizing reductions, global equality, and effective verification. And there are also provisions to constrain shorter range INF. The Soviets have agreed to start follow on negotiations toward eliminating the residual longer range INF and reduce the shorter range uh, weapons within six months of concluding the initial INF treaty. I believe our approach benefits the security of both the United States and the Allies and flows from the Alliance's 1979 dual track decision. And I look forward to 
and in your continuing support of our efforts in Geneva, both in INF and the Stark and defense and space areas of our negotiations. I'm going to ask Frank Carlucci and Ambassador Campbell to brief you further on these developments. And so, Frank, you start off. Thank you, Mr. President. As you've indicated,